Edna! I'm sorry. Do I know you? It's been nearly 50 years. I'm Lawrence White. Right. Well, it looks like he's going to have to be the bus, then. But I'll be late. Aren't you supposed to be a mechanic? Uh, yes, I am a mechanic, thank you, Cheek. It was going to take a while to fit. Pete! Hello, Monkey. You couldn't do me a favour, could you? My car's playing up and I've got to get Sarah to school. Oh, I'm rushing a bit myself. Oh, please. Look, I'm really up against it today. I'm short-handed at the garage. I've got a breakdown on the ring road and now this. You would be a complete lifesaver if you could do it. Please. Oh, come on. You, you know she's really missed you since you've been gone. Yeah, OK. Oh. Well, come on, Sarah. Get your stuff. Oh, thanks. Hey, I would kiss you, but um, it's off limits, so I'll just settle for a thanks, yeah? It isn't here somewhere. No, oh, you must be rushing your feet with Megan off. No, I'm coping. How is she? Oh, she is lucky to have a business partner she can rely on. Found it. Just put it in the wrong place. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Oh, uh, do you have the seating plan? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Oh, uh, I've got some names I'd like to add. Really? We never mentioned that before. Well, everyone wants to be there to watch you getting married. I'm sorry. You get married in a week. So it would be really good if we could go ahead and finalise the guest list, like, now. Who are these people? I don't know who they are. Well, just some friends and my second cousin and his wife. All right, well, it just would have been nice to have met them first, that's all. Yeah, not really practical. I mean, some of them are travelling a long way for our big day. But, but at least you've met everyone at the top table. OK, guys, why don't you go ahead and you can take all this away with you, talk amongst yourselves, and then when you're ready, we can finalise the guest list. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, but I am sorry. I just, I just want everything to be perfect. I can tell you're a bit shocked to see me. I just don't know why you'd come here after all this time. Something you'd rather stay forgotten, hmm? On the contrary, there hasn't been a day that I haven't thought about you. You've been in my prayers every night. Well, you haven't been in mine. Not that I do much pray. Not sure I believe in heaven and all that stuff. Although I do have some experience of hell, as you might remember. I'll admit I never expected to see you again. Not in this world, anyway. But I've always known that I would have to face up to what I did to you. Got bored of waiting, did you? Is that why you sent your friends after me? I didn't send anyone. They were the ones who wanted to dig up the past. I've always believed that you passed away. Yes. That was Harold's idea. He seemed to think that when I got out of prison, we could pick up where we left off, and that if you thought I was dead, then you wouldn't suspect anything. I presume you restarted your relationship when you got out? He never visited me when I was in prison. Because that would have been seen as an admission that he was guilty. I also did plenty of thinking while I was in there. And I realized it couldn't have just been your statement that put me away. He must have spoken out against me as well. Although... By then, I hated him as much as you. So you gave him up? He betrayed me. I thought my life was over. But the one thing I learned in prison was that I couldn't let either of you destroy me. I knew my life was worth more than that. Managed to drop the twins off at school. Whew. Someone got out of bed the wrong side this morning. I had them crawling all over me at the crack of dawn wanting to play. Yeah, yeah. It can be lively. At six in the morning. The kids, Jimmy. It's what they do. I know. Let me realise how much I miss Angel. It's probably why I'm feeling so ratty. About the fact that it's pretty crowded in here. <sighs> Don't get me wrong. I'm very grateful to you for putting me up. It's just... <sighs> Maybe it's time I went home. Yeah? How's Nicola gonna feel about that? It's my house. Angel's my daughter. I've got as much right to be there as she has. You okay? Not really. Just been going over Sam's credit card debt. It's a nightmare. Just pay 
looking for all them presents for Tracy. I feel like going and hunting her down and getting them all back. I don't know where we're going to find this money. Well, hey, at least you don't have to find all mine and one go. Just a few quid when you can manage it, it'll be a start. And, oh, he didn't want us to tell you this, but I do think you should know it wasn't just the credit card. He took out a PD loan as well. Oh, how could he be so stupid? Look, why don't you ask G for a pay rise? Between you and me, he's given us a little bit extra for my shifts. He's obviously flushed. Break's over. Back to work. Oh, doesn't seem like the right time now. I'd best try the rest of the family first. Harold was always glad that you were so devout. While you were in here, he knew we wouldn't be disturbed. When you're looking for illicit moments, these things matter. I was always surprised you didn't realise sooner. I, I thought I was imagining it at first. I suppose that's what I wanted to believe. But when I saw the way you looked at each other, I couldn't fool myself any longer. Why didn't you just leave him? I believe in the sanctity of marriage. Those whom God hath joined together. So you think that God told you to get me arrested? No. I was lost. I, I didn't know what to do. I know I can't ever change what happened, but I've spent the rest of my life trying to atone for it. But your guilt was based on a lie. Harold told you I was dead. But as you can see, I'm very much alive. I still sent a young man to prison. I can't imagine God can ever forgive me for that. Oh, I can really do with this, Brew. I had such a rubbish meeting this morning about Priya's wedding. Yeah, it must be really hard dealing with the Sharmas right now. Hmm? Why'd you say that? Oh, no, sorry. Real shame, isn't it? You ain't got your mystery man to help you unwind. Or should I say Jay? No, um, that... uh, No, 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 no. Don't you dare try and hide it, cos you're really rubbish at that. What were you thinking? Megan is going out with Jay. I mean, you do remember Megan, don't you? You know, your grieving business partner. I really hope you've put all that behind you, Layla. Yeah, I have, I promise. Good. Cos otherwise, you and Megan can't go on working together. I know. There's plenty more seagull fish in the sea. I mean, I heard Debbie and Pete split up, and he's got no strings. I need it back for tonight, so you'll be all right to work late if you have to. I was planning on having a few beers, so... If you're paying overtime, then... Oh, I don't know that was coming. Everyone seems to have their hand out these days. Here, time and a half, just make sure you do a good job. Sorry to interrupt. All right, Liz. Well, I hate to ask you, but I need a favour. Sam's got himself in a bit of bother over this tray, so... He's run up big bills. Well, how much? More than I want to even think about. But anything you could chip in would be a help. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, actually, it's not a good time for me either, but, you know, I'm sure I can manage, like, a hundred or so. That's very good of you, love. Thanks. Stop worrying over that. Just chill. Yeah, well, it's easy for you to say. I don't know half the people at my own wedding. So? You're the star of the show. It's up to them. To get to know you? No, I wish it was that simple. Oh, it could be fine. They'll all think my dad's the lucky one for landing a bride like you. Do you really think so? It's how you and dad feel that's really important. Do you know, I thought I might buy your dad a little wedding present. You know, something that was just between me and him. And then I realised that I don't have the slightest idea what he might like. <laughs> well... Is it not what this marriage is all about? Surely finding out about each other is where the fun starts. What are you doing here? I live here, remember? And what happened to keeping out of each other's way? No problem. Just leave me alone. I'll be going to work soon and sleeping on the couch later. I was planning on eating that. Don't you think you're being a bit petty? I did the shopping. I bet you put it on the joint card. I pay the bill. I put angel stuff on it too. Planning on starving your own daughter as well. No, of course not. Look, there's another one in the freezer. You do yours and I'll do mine later. As long as you let this baby to wash up after you. I'm quite capable of washing up a plate. So why do you always leave your stuff in the sink? 
instead of listing each other's irritating habits, which could take all day, why don't we agree to say nothing? It suits me. Have you enjoyed yourself? Oh, not really. Wait, you need to speak to Jay then. Really? Yes, I can see you wait. Busy. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I was wondering if you would consider upping me money a bit. No chance. Oh, well, I know you've given Kerry a bit more since she came back. Dear, it's not your business. Well, could you give me an advance? I'm your boss, not your bank. But we have got this urgent order, so if you want some more hours tomorrow, you can make some extra. Well, I would, but I need tomorrow off. You are joking me. Our bell's been let out on day release. It's the first time she's been home in ages. It's not my problem. No one's getting time off until this order's out. I need you outside now. What? I've got a problem with one of the delivery drivers. He's been drinking. <sighs> right, I'll sort it. And you, you can stop moaning. Or you won't be getting extra cash, you'll be out of a job. You got that? Loud and clear. Hating both of us for what we put you through. Well, I'm afraid I can't give you that satisfaction, Edna. I made up my mind not to waste time on bitterness. I made it the start of my life, not the end. I decided to move on, put the past behind me. Seems to me you've never managed to do that. I never planned to meet you again, Edna. I was so determined to move on. But I suppose, at my time of life, you do need some closure. Has it given you that? In a way. I've realised all we ever had in common was loving a man who wasn't worth it. Do you think that you could find it in your heart to forgive me? <laughs> Surely. The real question is can you forgive yourself? I don't think you've managed to do that yet. You seem to have been stuck in our nightmare the whole of your life. I can't hate you anymore, Edna. In fact, I feel sorry for you. Sorry? For me? Well, it's pretty clear that the years have been kinder to me than you. Have you never tried to find happiness with someone else after Harold? I made my vows in front of God and the congregation, for better or worse. He was my only one. Have you ever even been with a man? You haven't. Your life never even started. Perhaps that's what I deserved. No. No one deserves to waste their life. If I can put what happened behind me, then so can you. You OK? No, why wouldn't I be? Well, you just looked a bit tense. I'm guessing Jay wouldn't up your dosh. And what's worse, he won't give me time off to see Belle. Don't worry, man. If you need to nip out during the day, I'll cover for you, no bother. Thanks. It'll be a right pillock sometimes. Yeah, but right now, I couldn't do without him. Right. <laughs> see you in a moment. Lisa, can I help you? Yeah. Um, Jay offered me some overtime tomorrow, but I can't because Belle's coming home, so I wondered if I could do it tonight. Yes, yeah, certainly. We need all the help we can get at the moment. Oh, 
Was there something else? Uh, that's all. Could you pass the ketchup? Please. Allow me. Enough? Two can play at that game. This is stupid. You started it. Can't we just agree to put it all behind us? Not while you're hugging her in the street and mooning over a kid, no. I've told you, it's not like that. OK. It won't be like that from now on. You and Angel. You're the only family I've ever needed. Well, if that's true, why store sperm in the first place? Oh, please, let's not go through all that again. It was a mistake. Here, to prove it, Juliet's contact details. We'll talk through our solicitors and never mention the kid again. Good. You've made the right decision. You're not just doing this for a quiet life, are you? No, of course not. This way, it's... it's best for everyone. I think you ought to have this. I don't even know why I kept it. It's Harold's. You have more right to this than me. All these years, you've never loved anyone else. And have you? My wife and I met a few years after. Your wife? <laughs> Sadly, she died a few years ago, but I still have my beautiful daughters. So, uh, Harold was the only man in your life as much as mine? Uh, I can't exactly say that. I was tempted a few times, but my family meant too much to me to risk it. You should have had a family, too. Yes, well, too late to worry about that. But it's never too late to learn a lesson, Edna. We've neither of us many years left now. When you look at that watch, you should realize that it's time to stop living in the past and start living for now. For a minute, I can take that invoice in if you like. What the hell do you think you're doing? I just uh, brought in the invoice for the deliveries. You had your hand in the petty cash. I wasn't stealing it, I swear. Only because we came in before you could take it. Uh, Jay, we don't know that. I know she's been asking me for money. I know she was skiving at the cafe the other day. I know she thinks she can pick and choose her hours. I'm sorry, Lisa, but it's not good enough. I need staff who I can trust. I wasn't stealing. Go and check it. I know what I saw. I'll be docking your pay for the time that you've skived. One foot out of line and you won't have a job. Now go. Right, 320, please. I'll get that. And um, I'll get a vodka slim line as well, please. Yeah, fine. You don't need to do that. Well, it's the least I can do for helping out this morning. It was no problem. I know, but it meant a lot to Sarah. I've told you, Pete, she's... She's really been missing having you about. It was exactly why you shouldn't have guilt me into doing it. What? I, I was just up against it, that's all. It was no big deal. Yeah, you told me you didn't want the kids getting attached to a ball who weren't going to be sticking around, remember? And since we've agreed that we're not together anymore, it's not fair on them, is it? Is this the lot? Are you sure you're not having any more payday loans anywhere? No, that's everything. I promise. This all adds up to over five grand, Sam. 
Oh, all that money and you've got nothing to show for it. Samson's got an iPad. Oh. Don't you understand? All this needs to be paid back somehow. And with the interest rate the way it is, it's just going to be getting more and more day by day. I just wanted to be able to buy her stuff. You lied to me. About the telly, about everything. I don't know where we're going to find this sort of money. And Kerry needs her 400 quid back. There was a time I would have took my belt off to you for something like this. Oh, this isn't going to solve anything, Zach. And neither is all this shouting. You're just making things worse. Now look what you've done. You have really upset, Lisa. You know, it won't be top of the range, but I can soon pick up a second-hand telly. You all right, love? I'm fine. I'm, I'm absolutely fine. Coronation Street next, and Kylie decides she's got to get to the bottom of where Max's problems come from and goes to find his dad. Celebrity squares at eight. Tonight's guests include Jonathan Ross and Louis Walsh. And Scott and Bailey at nine, and Janet decides to give speed dating a go while Rachel mixes her pleasure with her business. Mm -hmm.